Hey, welcome students. I want to go ahead and talk to you a little bit about single replacement reactions. That's going to be the focus of this video, but let's begin by giving you a general way that you can identify them. Single replacement reactions involve one element in the compound, and one element in the compound is going to be replaced by the other. So let me provide you a little bit of a visual using some generic equations. Typically what you're going to find is you're going to get some element A, and it's going to react with BC and what happens here is you're going to get a replacement so B in this particular case is going to be replaced by the A producing an AC plus B and the reason that this happens is because normally the first atom in a uh, compound is always going to be the positive one and we notice any atom, atom on its own is usually going to have a charge of zero but normally it's also going to want to lean towards positive as well so what happens here is that this A is going to come in, it's going to attach itself to the C, which has a negative charge. That's why on the product side we see that AC is the product, and then B has been replaced. Now, this is only one way that it could happen. It could happen in the other way. You can have different variables here, so essentially we could replace the A with an, a B or the another letter. But essentially this is the generic process in which this occurs. All right? And so let's go ahead and give you an example or two of how we actually identify and how we balance chemical reactions that are categorized as a single replacement reaction. So one example that I want to show you is the following. Let's say that we have sodium. And sodium, we're going to go ahead and react it with water, which is H2O. And when they react, what we have get is we're going to get sodium hydroxide, NaOH and we're also going to produce some gas, hydrogen gas. Now I'm not going to go ahead and put the little subscripts on each of these, but do keep in mind that they are there. And sodium here will essentially would be a sodium, a solid. The water would be a liquid. Sodium hydroxide would be an aqueous solution, so it's going to dissolve. The sodium and the hydroxide will dissolve, forming ions. And what you're also going to get is you're going to get the hydrogen in the form of a gas. And so what we'll do first is we're going to go ahead and divide out the sheet here. This is our left side, our right side, and we'll begin as we've done the others. We'll begin with the first atom on the left. That means we're going to begin with the sodium. Notice that we've got one sodium on the left, and we've got one sodium on the right. So these are equal, equal numbers on the left and the right, so we can move on to the next atom. And that atom brings us to the hydrogens. Notice here we've got two hydrogens in this water molecule. And if we look on the right-hand side, we notice that we've got one hydrogen in the sodium hydroxide and we've got two hydrogens on its own in the gas form. So we've got a total of three hydrogens on the uh, right hand side. Whenever we're balancing equations the one thing that we don't want to have is odd numbers of anything. So the immediate thing that comes to mind that we want to do is that we want to go ahead and add another molecule or another compound rather of sodium hydroxide. So we'll add that here. And when we do that now we have two hydrogens where we used to only have one. And so on the right hand side, we add up all the hydrogens now, we've got a total of four hydrogens. Two from sodium hydroxide and two from the hydrogen gas. So that gives us a total of four. So if we go back over to the right hand side and we look at the water one more time, we need to add another water molecule or compound right here. And so that gives us a total of four hydrogens. So at least when it comes to our hydrogens, the hydrogens are balanced. Now we notice that the hydrogen is bound to the oxygen, so we've got two oxygens on the left hand side. And if we look on the right, we notice that we, when we added the sodium hydroxide, we even took care of the oxygens now, because we've got two oxygens on the right-hand side, here. All that's left to do now is to look at the sodiums. And so on the right-hand side, we've got two sodiums. And so if we look on the left-hand side, we notice that we've only got one, so we need to add another sodium. That brings us to a total of two. All that's left to do at this point is to go ahead and count the number of groups or compounds that we've got. So here for the sodium we've got one, two, so the coefficient for this one's going to be two. For the waters we've got one, two, and so the coefficient here is two. And if we look at the sodium hydroxides on the right hand side we've got one, two, and that means its coefficient is going to be two. And if we look at the, the last one here, the hydrogen gas, we've only got one. And so its coefficient is going to be, oh, excuse me, it's going to be one. And so we'll put that there as a one like that. If this is a multiple choice quiz or test, you want to go ahead and look for the answer that has the following coefficient uh, sequence. 
2, 2, 2, and 1. So this would be your answer on a multiple choice. Otherwise, you would write the coefficient numbers as you see them here in the equation written above. So that's the first example that we want to provide you in this series for single replacement reactions. The next example that I want to show you is going to be an example that involves iron and water. So let's go ahead and show you that example here. And so that example involves us taking iron and we're going to react that with water. And the products that we get are Fe304 plus 4H2, or rather I kind of gave that away a little bit here, so let's take that 4 off, and let's kind of go ahead and begin here. And so, if we do this, let me just rewrite the final one here. I've got a hydrogen gas. Alright, so let's go ahead and divide this, the scene here. We've got left and right. Now, if I do seem like I'm going a little bit fast, go ahead and rewind and watch this video again. But we're going to start off with the first atom on the left. We've got an iron. We've only got one. And so on the right hand side, we notice we've got an iron, but there's three. So right off the bat, I need to add another iron on the left hand side, as well as another one after that. That gives us a total of three irons on the left. If we compare that to the right side, we notice that our irons are balanced now. Three on the left, three on the right. So we move on to our hydrogens. We've got two on the left, and we've got two on the right. So the thing that we've got to do here is since these are good, the only thing that's left is the oxygens. On the oxygens for the water on the left hand side, we've got one oxygen. On the right, we've got four. So that means I need to add a couple uh, more of these waters. In fact, it's going to be a total of three more. And that gives us four oxygens for water on the left hand side that balances out the oxygens on the right. Our irons are already balanced. All that we need to do now is to kind of fix what we've done with the hydrogens on the left. We've got two, four, six, eight hydrogens on the left, if you count them there. And so we need to make sure that we come over here to the right-hand side and we add the appropriate number of hydrogen molecules. So if I add another one, that gives me four. So I'll add another, that'll give me six. And I add one more, that gives me eight. And so now that we've got all of these balanced, the last thing for us to do is to count up the groups and put our coefficients. So we'll begin with the farthest uh, left that we've got. And so we'll do one, two, three. So our coefficient here is going to be three. The waters, we've got one, two, three, and four. So the coefficient here is four. And we'll go to the right-hand side. We only have one here. So we're only going to put one for the FeO. And then for the last one here for the actual hydrogens, we've got one, two, three, and four. So that means the coefficient here is going to be a 4. And so this is the way you would balance it out. Longhand, if you're looking for an answer on a multiple choice problem, the coefficients that you're looking for are going to be 3, 4, 1, and 4. So those are the two reactions that we've done for you in the single replacement reactions. Check out the next videos where we talk about another type of chemical reaction.